What's going on everybody? It's Conti here with another photoshopping tutorial. A basic abstract art image in Photoshop using shape tools and gradient tools. So Photoshop windows open at the ready. Go to file new. The new canvas I'm going to open is 1400 pixels wide and 800 pixels high. Background contents transparent. Click OK. Go to select your gradient tool. Double click on the gradient thumbnail that appears in your toolbar to open the gradient editor. If you don't already have three color stops at the bottom of your gradient box, left click on one of the preset options in your gradient editor window. For example, the violet, green and orange, or you can left click manually underneath the actual gradient rectangle to create a color stop like so. Left click and delete any ones which are unnecessary. Left click on the first color stop, double click on color, location should be 0%. The hexadecimal code for this particular shade will be 002290, click OK. The same will go for the color stop at location 100%, 002290, click OK. And left click on the color stop in the middle, location 50%, double click on the color tab, the code for this particular shade will be 00759B. Click OK. Click OK again. Ensure that the linear gradient pattern is selected from your options. Left click in the top left corner of your canvas. Hold your left mouse button down. Drag to the bottom right corner. Let go of your left mouse button there. Go to your zoom tool. Ensure that zoom out is selected. Left click twice on your canvas to zoom out to roughly 33%. Select your brush tool. Brush size will be one pixel, soft round, opacity 100%. The foreground color should be set to white. Go to create a new layer. Rename this layer shape. Press enter when you're done. In the new shape layer, go to select your pen tool. I'm going to draw some rounded shapes which go across this particular canvas here. It's up to you as the Photoshop user to draw what shapes you want. Using the pen tool, I'm going to left click just below the bottom of the canvas in the middle. Moving my pen tool with the mouse to the section above the top right corner, I'm going to left click and hold the mouse button down, drag the mouse cursor to the right and upward slightly to create a curve effect. I will let go of the mouse here. I'm going to left click once to the right of my second pen point and once more down beyond the bottom right corner like so. And finally, I'm going to left click on my first pen point here where I started. Now that this outline has been created, make sure that you right click with the pen tool still selected on the actual canvas to reveal these options. If you right click outside the canvas, then you only get color options. I'm going to right click towards the left of my outline and select stroke path. Make sure that brush is selected as the tool and simulate pressure is unticked. Click OK. Now right click on the outline again and choose delete path. Go to your paint bucket tool. Double click on the foreground color color code you want this time will be 3581FF. Click OK. Left click inside the outline on your canvas. Go to your blending mode for your shape layer and select multiply. To make the background stand out more below your shape, reduce the opacity to roughly half. What I can now do with the shape layer tool is double left click to the right of the layer name and I'm going to use this option to create effects for the actual line such as shadows. If I left click once on inner shadow and then left click on the option itself I'm creating a faint shadow effect around my outline here. The properties I've selected for my inner shadow include the multiply blend mode, black color opacity 17 percent distance 7 pixels choke 0 percent size 16 pixels noise stays at 0 click OK right click on your shape layer and select duplicate layer 
click OK on the new window that appears. I'm going to zoom out slightly once more. With the new shape copy layer selected, press Ctrl and T on your keyboard. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you're a Mac user. Using your left mouse button, left click just outside one of the corner boxes here. Hold your left mouse button down and drag to the side. Left click and resize your shape once you are done with any rotations. Hold shift to ensure that the length and height ratio remains the same. Let go of your left mouse button and let go of shift when you're done. Press enter and use the move tool to reposition your new shape layer. To create blending effects, I'm going to vary the opacity of each of my shapes. The first shape was 50% with its opacity. The second shape I'm going to reduce by 10% to 40. Repeat this process until you have a blending pattern which you're satisfied with. What you can also do now to vary the blending patterns is use the eraser tool to remove certain sections of these shapes here. If I go to my eraser tool, in this particular example here, I'm going to use a brush size of 569, soft round brush and opacity set to 75%. Make sure that you select the relevant layer before using the eraser tool. I'm going to select the first shape that I made and left click on the line section towards the top right corner here. And you can see some of the light blue from the background appearing. I'm going to left click on my second shape and do some slight erasures to the line here. Once you are done with editing your shapes, you can create copies of these patterns simply by holding control as a PC user or command as a Mac user and left clicking on each of your layer options before right clicking and duplicating layers. Click OK on the new window that appears. You should see a whole new selection of shapes that appear within your layer window. What I can do with all four of these selected is I can do Ctrl and T and use the rotate options and resizing to shift these elsewhere. Press enter when you're done. Keeping individual shape layers separate enables me as the Photoshop user to modify shapes more thoroughly. An alternative if you want to keep a set of shapes together is to right click on the selected shapes and choose merge layers. If you wish to modify the shadow for some of the shapes, double click on the effect icon which appears underneath the layer name which you want to change. To go back to layer style again, if you wanted to remove a whole shadow, just left click on inner shadow itself or double click on the actual icon to go back and change the shadow properties for this particular layer. Click OK when you're done. Keep on using these techniques to create your own simple abstract art image in Photoshop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. To support this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.